What's up you guys, it's Nassim here. Now, before I get into the video, I wanted to go over a question that I feel like a lot of people are asking when it comes to this device. And that is, is the M1 iPad Pro too powerful for its own good? And that's a question that I also kept asking myself when it came to this device, because thanks to the brand new M1 chip, the iPad has a massive spec upgrade from last year's in terms of power, speed, and many other functionalities. And while I love this new internal redesign of the iPad Pro as a whole, I ask if it's too powerful for its own good because when it comes to iPads, a lot of times their power is extremely hindered by its own software. And every year whenever an iPad comes out, there's always that ultimate question that comes along with it. Can it replace my MacBook Pro? Well, when we look at the M1 iPad Pro compared to the M1 13 inch MacBook, both of these devices have an eight core CPU and eight core GPU and they both have a 16 core neural engine. Meaning that in terms of internal power, this year's M1 iPad Pro is just as powerful as the base model M1 13 inch MacBook. And as you guys can see here, I'm just scrolling through apps within each device and you can just see how fast the iPad Pro is compared to the MacBook. Even doing some editing on it for those of you that were wondering how it runs with heavy use and I must say that this iPad did much better than expected. Now, just like the M1 MacBook, the M1 iPad can go all the way up to 16 gigs worth of RAM and two terabytes worth of storage, which is completely insane within an iPad. And as you guys can see here, I have so many different apps going on. But something that is extremely cool about this iPad is that because it has a massive amount of RAM, whenever I would leave an app to go do something else on the iPad, a few hours later, I would come back to the same moment where I left off at. And it didn't matter how many apps I opened, like as you can see here, I have over 20 apps that I haven't even closed. And no matter what app I press on, this iPad will take me back to the exact moment where I left off, which is insanely cool. Now, when it comes to the 11 inch liquid retina display of the M1 iPad Pro, it was definitely as great as I thought it was gonna be. And usually I will use it in the house where I was playing games on it. And I did a lot of planning and internet surfing on it. And whenever I went outside, I found it was very bright when dealing with the light as I would go out and do research on it when I couldn't be home. It even was able to handle darkness well because whenever I was using it at night, it was never too harsh on my eyes and was always a pleasant experience all around. Now, the battery was also something that I really liked about this tablet. This time, instead of me using my MacBook to do work, I instead used the iPad as a planner and a thumbnail editor for my videos. Now, I would usually spend about five hours planning videos and doing other work related things on the iPad. So at the end of the day, I would usually have about 42% which is a really good thing, especially when comparing it to the MacBook Pro and which I'll get around 52% towards the end of the day. Now, the last thing that I wanted to talk about was the camera, specifically the fact that you can take ultra wide angle photos. And I would definitely say that the camera is something that surprised me because as you can see here, I took some photos with my iPad and my iPhone 12 Pro. And as you can see here, even though the iPhone 12 Pro is obviously better, the iPad definitely held its own when compared and even though the colors can be a little flushed at times, it still was good for a device when its camera is considered to be an afterthought. I also wanted to show you guys some footage that I took in different settings with the 4K video recording that I felt looked pretty good and was well worth sharing. Now, after my final analysis of the M1 iPad Pro is pretty much wrapped up, the question still remains, is the M1 iPad Pro too powerful for its own good? And the answer is yes, because even if you factor in the fact that it's much more powerful than a 13 inch MacBook, it doesn't matter because you'll still be able to do much more on the MacBook because of its interface and its software. And this is the reason why I feel Apple should just reinvent their software within the iPad, because what's the point of all that power if it can't be put to use? The interface is just completely outdated because the iPad isn't comparable to a phone like it used to be. It's gotten much more advanced and it's now in the ranks of MacBooks and should be treated as such. And if you guys made it to the end of this video, I would like to say thank you for sticking around and don't forget to like this video and subscribe. It will be very appreciated. And also as far as social media, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.